Welcome to the Cross Border Interviews. I'm your host, Christopher Brown. Now, in today's special episode, we recently ventured to Regina, Saskatchewan for the 2024 SUMA Convention. Now, amidst the networking, breakout sessions, and speeches from provincial party leaders, we engaged with local elected leaders hailing from across Saskatchewan. Though this episode may be briefer than our standard episodes, its significance remains undiminished. We'll be right back after a quick message with cross-border interviews featuring City of Moose Jaw Mayor Clive Tully. Are you passionate about local governance and municipal issues? Do you believe in the power of community-driven conversations? Then join us at the Cross Border Network, where we bring together voices from across Canada to shine a spotlight on the challenges and the triumphs of our municipalities. But we need your support to keep the conversation going. Visit crossborderinterviews.ca today to show your support by backing the show monthly or making a one-time annual donation. Your contribution will help us grow and expand our reach, bringing important stories to even more listeners across the nation. Together, we can make a difference. Together, we can amplify the voices of local communities. Together, we can shape a brighter future for all. Cross Border Network, where local matters and your support counts. Visit us today at crossborderinterviews.ca. Clive, thank you so much for doing this. i got to start by asking a simple question, but an overarching one. Where did your sense of duty to serve your community come from? My family. Um, my mother and father were both very in, engaged in the community, both volunteered, uh, were very active. Um, my mother was more of a left-wing person, my father a little bit of a right-wing person, and they used to argue at the dinner table. And so uh, I have had a career of 20 years as a mediator, but I started out at the dinner table trying to interfere with uh, mom and dad's arguments and trying to bring some sanity to the discussion. So, uh, but no, they were very, very interested in the community. They both volunteered, and uh, my mother served on Moose Jaw City Council. And about 10 years after that, I was on Moose Jaw City Council from 1988 to 1991. So you, you've had a long history in municipal politics then, whether it be your mother and now yourself. Um, what made you get involved? What made you decide that municipal politics was the politics for you? I tend to have a little trouble uh, following par party policy. Uh, if I was a provincial or a federal uh, elected official, I think I'd have a little bit of a problem following the party line, towing the party line, so to speak, maybe on issues I didn't agree with. Um, I see municipal politics as an opportunity to uh, serve your fellow citizens and uh, do what's right for the community, regardless of, of what a, a federal provincial party would be telling you. Um, it's grassroots. It's uh, you're, you're working f with you and your neighbors, trying to make the city a better place to live and work and play. So um, that's what appealed to me uh, uh, in terms of uh, the three levels of government. So you, you were a councillor in the early, late 80s, early 90s. Now yeah. you're a mayor in 2024. Yeah. you got to ask this stupid question, but for me, the important mm -hmm. one, has municipal politics changed a lot over that time? I don't think a lot, no. Um, we tend to hear in, in communities, you tend to hear from the extreme people. People that are far on the right wing are people that are far on the left wing. And most of the people in the middle, say for instance, 10% of the people are, have a, a right wing view, 10% have a left wing view. The other 80% in the middle are... Um, as long as just, my water's pick, yeah, turned on and my garbage yeah, are picked up? Well, they're, they're decent people. They know some of the struggles that communities have. They understand that. Um, they know that, for the most part, uh, their municipal government's doing the best it can with the resources it has, uh, and, and they have empathy for people that are less fortunate. And uh, so I think the kind of the silent majority, I think, is about the 80% of the population, and, and, and hopefully they will get out and vote and be active in the community and participate in, uh, in uh, nonprofits and volunteering and, and kind of making the, the community richer. So I want to turn to Moose Jaw as a whole for a second. I want to ask you a question, but before I do, I'm going to preface it by saying this is a conversation between the mayor and myself. Mm -hmm. Not a motion of council, not a direction of council, not a policy of council. This is your opinion. Mm -hmm. In your opinion, what do you believe is the biggest issue facing Moose Jaw today? Or issues? I think, unfortunately, and I hate to be generic like this, but unfortunately it's the same issue facing every, every municipal government in, the, in this country. 
Um, we simply don't have enough resources to maintain our infrastructure. Um, so we try as we can to be smart about what we do and how we do it, uh, to uh, stage things uh, as we get the money to do them. Uh, but unfortunately, we're kind of slipping behind. And the city of Moosha fell way behind when we had some politicians that had, um, they ran on a 0% tax increase and they, they spent 10 years uh, in governance where they had a 0% tax increase. Well, cost of living index was always at least 3% during that time. So three times 10, we have 30% of what we should be using for city budget is not there because we didn't have those increases during that 10 year period. And so we're, we're struggling in terms of maintaining our roads, maintaining our sewer and water systems. And uh, when you do 0% tax increases, what ha tends to happen is people put uh, user fees on things and utility fees and, and try and raise the money in a different way. Um, but when you come to a conference like um, uh, SUMA or FCM, you hear it from everybody else. Uh, there's just a lack of uh, money for infrastructure and um, we're doing the best we can, but it's, it's a bit of a losing proposition. Um, we think um, growth of our city is important in terms of uh, enlarging our tax base, create more revenue so we have more money to, uh, to spend. I will say that our police department and fire department are excellent, and they could probably serve with very little additional staff, they could probably serve another 10 or 15,000 people. Um, so we're in that, that slot where we're big enough to have those kinds of uh, services, police and fire, uh, but not quite big enough to be able to fund them at the, at the level we need to. So um, my job as I see it and the job of council in our community is to grow our community, expand our tax base and create more revenues so that we can kind of maintain our infrastructure and our services. So I'm going to play a little devil's advocate with yeah. you here because the sins of the father lay bare on the, the fruit of the child because that those 10 years where you didn't have those increases, and I'm not saying you, but mm -hmm. Moose Jaw as a whole, it's yeah. those 3% tax increase. Yeah. You can't go to your tax base today and say, we're going to increase your taxes 30% to offset some of the challenges that we're having right now because we didn't foresee it or the councils of the past didn't foresee it. How do you see yourself as mayor and council balancing growth on the backs of people who are here because when you talk to your residents i'm assuming you're hearing the same thing i'm hearing mm -hmm. we're struggling yeah we're living paycheck to paycheck yeah and a one percent two percent even three percent tax increase to some people that is detrimental to them yeah. so how do you see yourself in balancing growth of your community with the here and now of the people who are living well this in in this year we raised the taxes 7.6 percent uh, I describe that as one of the worst days of my life. Yeah. Uh, it's very, very difficult um, to pass that along to people, knowing, as you've explained, uh, the circumstances of most people. Um, but we cut so many things that I thought were important to do to get to that 7.6%. So I guess what we try to do is we try to raise the taxes a little bit incrementally to try and make up for the, the losses we had previously. Um, and we try and manage better. We have a new city manager, I think is a very smart person, very capable, working closely with, uh, with her directors and her managers and her supervisors to see if in fact we in Moose Jaw can do things smarter and better, uh, at least uh, um, optimize the use of the, of the uh, income that we do have. So on the flip side, because I've been accused on the show of only talking about issues and challenges, yeah. what does Moose Jaw get right? What is the thing that you're most proud of your community? Well, do you know, when I uh, come to conferences, and invariably when people meet me and they realize I'm the mayor of Moose Jaw, they say things like, I love Moose Jaw. Oh, my wife and I go there uh, twice a year shopping, and we just love downtown. And I met a gentleman yesterday who was so thrilled. His 10-year-old was so excited to go to the tunnels to her. And they were only able to fit in one of the three tunnel tours when they were there. So they're now planning their next trip back to Moose Jaw. And uh, he's so excited, he wants to do Bunker 24. And um, just, that's very heartening to hear that. So my last question for you here before I let you go, because uh, we're at conference and I'm assuming you want to go mingle with the people and network and hear some of the challenges. But in your opinion, what makes Moose Jaw such a unique place to live, work and raise a family? I'm not sure what it is. And um, a guy there named Gary Maxwell came in and worked with the community before I became mayor. And they struck this um, 
catchphrase, slogan, uh, Moose Jaw, Canada's most notorious city. And I think it's apropos. It, there's something unique about Moose Jaw. And if you, uh, you watch late night cowboy movies, you might see, uh, hear the cowboy say he's headed north with a herd of cattle to Moose Jaw. Um, the name's been used in all kinds of movies, uh, the Guess Who song. Um, it's, there's something unique. And I grew up in Moose Jaw, and I love the city. And many of my generation left uh, for economic opportunities. And I, you know, I went to university in Saskatoon and Regina. I lived in Prince Albert. I've worked uh, internationally in uh, Turkey and in Vietnam. Moose Jaw is the best place in the world, as far as I'm concerned, and that's why uh, I think it's there's something unique about it. And uh, it's people. We're friendly. We're notorious. Uh, we're welcoming, and it's just a great place to spend time. Clive, always a pleasure. Thank you so much. We want to thank the Saskatchewan Urban Municipality Association for inviting us to this year's SUMA AGM in Regina, Saskatchewan. This episode would not have been achievable without their support. So if today's episode sparked your interest, hit that subscribe button now. Stay in the loop with all our diverse content covering everything from municipal affairs to our in-depth conversations with municipal leaders from across Canada on the cross-border interviews or our eye-opening exploration of local governance in the political trenches, local government at work. We are your go-to platform for comprehensive municipal coverage, committed to keeping you well-informed as well as engaged. But your support is the backbone of our growth and the maintenance of this top-notch content you have come to enjoy. If you can, consider backing the show. Every contribution, big or small, amplifies the depth and the breadth of our programming. Find the support page link on the Cross Border Interviews website today. Until next time, stay informed, stay engaged, and most importantly, just keep talking. Thank you.